and so on. You can talk about power in terms of you know, pleasure constantly. Right? That's an important thing to know, that power correlates with pleasure, and that you get metaphors for, for this, uh, so somebody can talk about a power high. And so now, uh, these things structure everything that you learn, and I'll talk about how moral systems get structured that way. So, but basically, you are thinking metaphorically all the time without knowing it. You say prices rise, you're thinking metaphorically. Yeah, uh, so on. There are zillions of such cases, and a lot of them matter, and we'll talk about some that matter. So if you think about nature as a resource, that's a metaphor. Right? It's a metaphor that matters. Okay? Not a good metaphor. Okay, so you're thinking metaphorically. You're thinking in terms of frames. Uh, now, another thing that you learned, we all learned, was that uh, the purpose of having a conceptual system is that is self-interest, to pursue your self-interest, to pursue your purposes. That's part of enlightenment reason. And it turns out to, sh to, in, to show up in uh, uh, things like the you know, various game theoretical models of the economy and so on. Now, uh, is that true? Answer, only partly. It's partly true that you think in order to pursue purposes. And it's partly not true in the following way. Uh, there was a great discovery made in 1995 in Parma, Italy where it was discovered that uh, monkeys and people have uh, neurons and neural systems in their premotor pre cortex over here, uh, which choreographs complex action, like taking a sip of coffee. That's a complex action. Your motor cortex does simple things. It does this, 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 so on. To take a drink of coffee, you have to put those together in a very fluid way. Your premotor cortex does that and has connections to the motor cortex. Now, uh, it turns out that um, when you uh, perform an action like this, certain neurons are firing in order to get your body to do it. Okay? The same neurons are firing when you see someone else perform the same action. Right? Mind blowing. Why? Not a miracle. <laughs> It turns out that there are neural connections between the premotor cortex and the parietal cortex just behind it. And that those neurons are what are called tuned as you grow up. You know, you're, you're linking uh, what you do with what you see yourself do and others do. And one of the things about parents, how many parents are there in the room? We have a couple here. Uh, all right. The first thing you do as a parent when you have a newborn baby is you imitate the baby. Ever notice that? The baby says, goo, you say goo. Right? <laughs> it's not just that the baby's imitating you, which can happen, but you can imitate the baby. <laughs> and the baby, therefore, those neurons are getting tuned every time that happens. Now, um, what does that mean? It turns out that those neuron, nor that neural system is linked to your emotional system. And that means that you can look at someone else writhing in pain and feel that they're in pain. You can look at someone else who's happy with joy and feel their joy. This is the basis of empathy. And empathy is the basis of social connection. And those neurons fire more when you're cooperating with someone than when you're just looking at them or imitating them. You are hardwired for empathy and cooperation. Now, that wiring, that neural wiring, can get stronger depending on how you're brought up or weaker. That is, if you don't experience empathy, then it gets weaker. If you experience lots of it, they get stronger. So basically, how you're brought up matters. The very first thing you learn when you learn something about your neural system is that between 0 and 5, half of your neural connections die off, the ones that are not used. Right? Why is early childhood education important? That's why. Okay. Now. The, what does all this mean when you put it together? It says that reason is more interesting than you thought. It has to do, it's frame-based, it's metaphorical, 
it is not the case that it works by formal logic. It works by frame-based reasoning. It works by metaphorical reasoning. You know, formal logic comes out of that, but it's very, very limited. Right? Most people don't reason that way. Uh, people may reason the same about some things around the world and differently about others. It's not the case that everybody has the same reason. And what does it say about language? The traditional view of enlightenment reason says that you can think directly about the world, that words encode thoughts, and therefore language is neutral, that the same words have the same meaning because they're defined in terms of the world. That is false. Every word is defined in terms of the f conceptual framework that you understand. And people can have different ones. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But it matters that people can have different ones. Language matters. And we'll get to that momentarily. But is that much clear? I wanted to just give you a sense of this. Why? Because in economics, the rational actor model is based on all the false assumptions. Okay. Now let me give you, I, I want to do one thing on the board. I, I'm going to put one equation up. I, I apologize in advance for putting an equation up, but I love e I you. Know, I was trained as a mathematician, so I love them. Okay. Uh, this is the basic equation for cost-benefit analysis. Okay. And it goes like this. You're integrating over time. It's sort of summing over all instances of time, summing with respect to time. And it's the sum of the benefit for some activity x at a given time minus the costs of x at a given time times a certain factor. Okay. What is the factor? e to the minus d times t dt. d is the discount rate or the interest rate. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Okay. In general, this says, in order to, it says you're understanding benefits and costs in terms of numbers, namely money. You have to translate it into money or other numbers. And that money in the future is worth less than money now because of interest rates go up exponentially. They're compounded. Okay. What, is that, what does this say? That the value of benefits over time goes down exponentially with the dis discount rate times the time, which means that future benefits go tend towards zero very quickly. That's in the mathematics of cost-benefit analysis. It's anti-ecological. It's exactly the opposite of anything you want to use for anything that has to do with the ecology. Okay? Crucial if you're thinking in terms of business. Crucial if you're thinking in terms of public policy. Don't, and, and there's a lot in public policy that says we should always use cost-benefit analysis. What are the costs, my, you know, the benefits of this policy if, uh, minus the costs, right? Wrong. Anything that has to do with anything long-term should never use that equation, ever. Okay? What, you do, what I'm doing here is simply telling you a little bit of cognitive science. Equations have meaning. They're not just true of the world as if they're just truths of the world. They have meaning. People invent them, and this is invented for short-term profit. It works very, very well if you're in a company and what you're trying to do is maximize short-term profit. That's when you use this. Okay? Anything ecological, you don't. Now, uh, let me come back to uh, what we were talking about in terms of metaphor. Uh, one question that you should be asking yourself is, uh, where does morality come from? What is a moral system? Uh, are there understandings of morality around the world that are the same? The answer is yes, and we know something about where these systems come from. And um, in order to understand...